What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here. Week three of the NFL is in the books. We are 60 days, give or take, post-national. And I thought it would be a good time to kind of just do a little overview of some of the players that have played extremely well, some that have disappointed, and check back 60 days because it puts it right at the time of the national when football buying frenzy was at its peak. So if you went to the national and you bought some of these guys, you could be way up or you could be way down. Let's go ahead and dive into market members link in the description down below buck for the first month, bunch of different payment options, depending on what tier of service you would like to get into. And we are now live in market movers X. The current version of market movers is X. Uh, the old version has moved away. I have liked the time that I've spent with it. Still getting used to things because I just have muscle memory for the old system, but major improvements all around. Let's start off with the hottest player in the NFL, but not the hottest player price-wise, though it does look like it might be starting to turn a little bit, and that is Lamar Jackson. He has come out of the gates on fire. Him and Mark Andrews both are just shredding defenses right now. Lamar is passing everywhere, running up and down the field. Definitely playing for that contract. His card prices, though, have not gone crazy, though that might be changing after this past week. Uh, his optic base, and once again, I'm going back. Every card we're talking about today, 60 days back, which puts us right at the beginning of the National. For Lamar, we're going to look at Prism Base, Optic Base, and Optic Hollow. We are not looking at Prism Silver. For those of you that may or may not know, 2018 Prism Silvers are ridiculously low pop count, like near impossible. I think most quarterbacks from that PSA 10s are like pop 20. There's just not a lot of them out there. They were nearly impossible to hit. But what do we have? Definitely a little uptick. You can see he was basically flat throughout the whole entire summer. Uh, his optic base overall is up 56%. Optic hollow is in the red. We'll talk about that in a second. Prism base is up 12.5%. You can see the prism base, it dipped actually a little bit, and then now it's starting to come back up again. Same thing with his optic base. The optic hollow hasn't moved because there hasn't been a sale in 10 days. So I would expect the next one of these to go off the board is going to be probably about a 10 or 15% increase over current prices. Lamar's played out of his mind and it's taken the week three for the market to kind of buy in and start moving his price in an upward direction. They look... Great. They're probably going to decimate the Browns uh, whenever they play them. Moving along. We've got a lot of stuff we want to look at today, so I want to keep this moving. Josh Allen, the poster boy of the sports card market. Everybody loves Josh Allen. Same thing. We're looking at 2018, so we're going to stick to base prism, optic hollow, and base optic just to get a sense for how this stuff is moving. Same thing, 60 days. Prism is up 12%. The base, the optic hollow is up 40%, and his optic base is up 20%. They've played well. They're two and one. Uh, obviously, the loss of the Dolphins this past week in a drop dead game, essentially, as players were just falling by the wayside uh, as that game wore on into the third and fourth quarter in the Miami Heat. But the Bills have looked fantastic this season. Allen and Diggs have been tearing up the league. Week three aside, we'll, we will see where things continue to go from here. But overall, so far, Allen is up. So Allen and Lamar. Lamar is you feel pretty good right now, Alan. You obviously feel pretty good right now with prices increasing. You made a little bit of profit if you loaded up at the National. How about Trevor Lawrence? This one actually surprised me. Now, Lawrence, I looked at Silver Prism Raw, Optic Hollow Raw. There's still not a lot of his graded stuff on the pop report, and it's super swingy and huge gaps in sales. So I just went raw prices here. I was actually surprised by this a lot. I thought he would see a little bit of a bigger spike because the Jaguars have been playing really well and Lawrence looks really good. Now you can see the teal line here, Jaguar teal, just Jag Jaguars colors here, is the optic hollow. You can see it's actually been ticking up the last 14 days or so. Prism silver also, if, you, if I ran a trend line going back to like the 15th, it would slightly be skewing up as well. So over the last week or so, T-Law is flat to slightly up. Over the 60 days since the National, though, he's actually down quite a bit. 
The Optic Hollow is down 60%. Prism Silver is down 20%. Obviously a lot of rotted grade. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that these prices would have been slightly inflated because it was a newer released product back 60 days ago. Had been out for a little bit, but still you still have that feeling out period where prices haven't fully leveled off yet. But it does look like he is starting to show an uptick. In fact, let's switch this to a 14 day view and see what it looks like. Now we have green. Uh, up 6%, up 15%. But he looks pretty good. If you could find his stuff rot of grade, that is 100% probably a play with him. The Jaguars look like a completely different team this year with a new head coach. Surprising one here. I guess really not surprising. Herbert and Burrow. The two hype boys from the 2020 rookie class. Is the shine starting to come off already? Burrow, the offensive line has been a struggle. The thing that they went out and put a ton of money in and improved has not shown so far on the field. Herbert is still a charger and the chargers are still charging. They cannot get out of their own way. Why he was in that game on Sunday when they were down like 30 with three minutes to go with a bunch of busted up ribs, I have no idea what they were thinking. So Herbert's banged up. They've looked ho-hum. Burrow has had some moments, but overall they look a little bit rough as well. Their prices reflect it. Once again, 60 days. Here, we're looking at PSA 10s of Prism Base, Optic Base, Hollow, and Prism Silver. What do we see? A bunch of red. Generally speaking, across the board, we're not going to run through these individually, but essentially about a 20% drop. You know, there's some things depending on when the last sale was here and there, but essentially we're talking about a 20% drop, give or take, somewhere up to closer to 30% on Herbert and Burrow stuff since the national. And really most of that dip has been in the last week or two. I, you know, this similar things happened last year. Burrow stuff dipped pretty hard in season. Herbert stuff dipped pretty hard in season and then rallied back as they made second half runs. Obviously we're not even close to the halfway point of the season yet. There's a long way to go. These are the sorts of, and I'm not saying run out and buy at these prices or anything crazy like that. Cause I'm, I'm not currently looking to buy at these prices, but these are the situations to monitor and why I don't like carrying football in the season and would rather try to buy football in season if you could find deals on a player that you like. A lot of these guys, you know, Burrow and Herbert were untouchable, perfect, nothing could ever go wrong with them, and their stuff's down. Now, we're going to talk about two guys that that is not the case. You would make, you'd be printing money right now uh, if you had a bunch of their stuff, and also two more guys that you would have lost your ass on. So it's not all sunshines and kittens out there, but Burrow and Herbert definitely taking a little bit of a hit. We will see how things continue to play out as the season moves on. Tua, one of the golden boys, not the golden boy, but definitely had a very strong week two that bolstered his prices. Week three did not look as good. I don't know if part of that was weather related or just the bills or whatever. They did pull out the win, uh, but he did not have a very big game. I think he will have other big games just with Hill and Waddle. Alone, that's going to carry him. We are looking at his Optic Hollow, his Silver Prism, and his Base Prism PSA 10. I did not include Optic Base on this one. Generally speaking, up about 20%, 10 to 20%. His Hollow's up a little bit less, but Silver Prism's up 20%. Base Prism is up 25% since the National. And same thing, you can see it here on the Silver Prism line. It has really taken off over, let's call it the last, uh, about two weeks. Basically since week two with that Ravens game, kind of put him on everybody's map, but his stuff has definitely been creeping up. Now, they play Thursday night football. They play later this evening. He's a little banged up. If he comes out and has another bad game or just plays whatever, we'll see what happens. Uh, if he comes out and balls out, could get another little bit of a bump again. Moving along, let's get to the ugly. Trey Lance, Mac Jones. These guys, both of them, were hyped to hell at the National. Trey Lance specifically, a lot of people were looking for Trey Lance stuff. He got a little unlucky with the ankle injury. I was not a big fan of him, period, full stop. Anyway, I did not think he was very good. Mac Jones is the other one. Mac Jones stuff has also taken a beating. I was never really a big fan of him either. Just if he was not on the Patriots, I don't think anyone would care about Mac Jones. He's hurt as well now. High ankle sprain, 
going to be out for a while. Also was not playing fantastic. Same thing. We're looking at 2021 class here. So it's a little trickier looking at raw, raw silver, raw hollows for both players. Trey Lance is down 60 to 65%. Mac Jones is basically down 50% over the last 60 days. Is there a buying opportunity at some point on these guys? Probably more so Trey Lance. Honestly, if I was going to buy the dip on one of these guys, I would probably look at Trey Lance. And I do not like Trey Lance, but I know how this is going to go. Jimmy G is a perfectly fine game manager. He's not anything fantastic. Trey Lance is going to be their quarterback again next year. He's going to miss the entire season, which means no one gets to see him play, which means people get to build the hype up for him again next year. I don't think it gets to his crazy levels because some people will have learned their lesson. But his stuff will rebound and there will be a market for it in the offseason. Now, we might be burning cards for warmth by then. I don't know. But there's probably a decent chance at some point in time this thing's going to hit the floor and start creeping back up again. It's just the nature of this beast. You have to be willing to sit and hold for a long time, though. You're probably going to have to hold until next year's national or at least the summer. That's a long way to tie up some money. Next up. Jalen Hurts, the biggest, one of the biggest winners, actually probably the biggest winner uh, of the offseason or of the season so far. His stuff has gone straight to the moon. This is Prism Silver on this top line. It looks like a roller coaster starting to head on up. You're heading up to go to the dive. Over the last 60 days, Optic Hollow up 30%. Prism Silver up 82%. Base Prism up. 70%. Now, I have my concerns with Hertz. I made a video. You know, the four guys that uh, I thought were pretty overrated heading into the season, it was Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Tua, and Jalen Hurts. For Trey and Mac, I just straight did not like them. I did not think they were very good players. For Tua and Jalen, my concerns were that Jalen was a better fantasy quarterback than a real life quarterback and that Tua couldn't live up to the hype. Now, two one out of three weeks, Tua has lived up to the hype. Week two, he was absolutely amazing. Week one and week three, eh. But, you know, they won, so it's whatever. We'll see where things go from here. Jalen actually looks like he's putting things all together and is just shoving it in my face. I always liked the talent. I just wasn't sure if he could become a competent passer. He seems to have figured that out. So I was 100% wrong on Jalen Hurts, at least to this point. If you have Jalen Hurts, what are you doing? Are you selling? You hopefully, you're not buying more. You don't want to buy on the way up. Uh, you know, we talk about this all the time. If you have multiples, this would be a good idea to start moving off some of your position on this stuff. Hurts is a running quarterback. There's a decent chance he could get hurt, no pun intended. But can he keep this up? They look really, really good. Maybe he ends up making a deep run all the way into the Super Bowl or the NFC Championship or whatever. The NFC is pretty weak. If we have learned anything over the last couple of years in the sports card world, when we see things like this, these ramps getting ready to take off that we're going to fly off of like Evil Knievel, you should probably start thinking about maybe moving some of the stuff. How many times are we going to have to learn our lesson that this stuff does not just keep going up forever and at some point it is going to pull back? If you can make a nice little profit off something, sometimes the best answer is just not to get cute. Obviously, you got to do what's best for you. Do your own homework, do your own research. You know, we say that all the time, but I have to keep saying it because I just listened to what the guy said on the YouTube and then it, it went wrong. Do your own homework, do your own research, do what works best for your current situation. But we've seen this before. Hurt, maybe Hurts ends up winning the Super Bowl and his stuff 10Xs between now and then. Take a look at how much of the stuff that you have. Evaluate, think about what you want to do. Maybe move off of a little bit, hold a couple back. Take some profits, balance it out a little bit. You know, prudent, prudent, uh, non-financial advice. That's all I have for you guys and girls today. Like I said, just kind of wanted to do a quick little whip around uh, and check in on some of the hyped and trendy quarterbacks leading into this NFL season. Now, there's obviously some guys we didn't touch on on this list. We didn't talk about Mahomes. We didn't talk about Brady. There's a handful of other guys we can't talk about everybody. And otherwise, it's going to be an hour-long video. But I just wanted to touch on some of the young, trendy guys uh, that everyone's been hyping up over the summer. Maybe we'll look at some of the other ones next week or maybe on Sunday's video. We shall see. But like, comment, subscribe. 
catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.